Hi everybody, at this point you should have both Python and Wing installed. Go ahead and run Wing um, just by typing Wing into the search bar um, or clicking on an icon. Now before we get started, one thing you need to do is make sure that Wing is pointed to the right version of Python. So go to the project menu, go to project properties, and up here you may see use default. And if it uses default and you have more than one version of Python installed on your computer, <clears throat> you won't know which one it's running. So um, best thing to do is to go ahead and click command line and then you will see a path to the version of Python that it wants to run. You can click browse. Now in this case we're going to be using Python 3.8. So I am down in program files. Whoops. Here on the C drive program files this is the 16-bit old, old, old programs. This is the, or 32-bit, this is the 64-bit. So we want to be in there and you want to install 64-bit Python. And then we scroll down and I've got two here. And there's 3.8 and there's my python.exe. That's the actual program that is the Python language interpreter. So that's what Wing runs in the background to run Python to execute your, uh, your scripts. Click open, and then it'll put it in there and we'll change that later on um, for other purposes but for right now just make sure you use the one that is 3.8 and we're off and running uh, there's not a lot of difference between 3.7 and 3.8 so it won't be a big problem if you have 3.7 especially now because we're just going to get started basic things sort of a tradition in the programming world is the first thing you do when you meet a new programming languages language is type hello world now this is a print command or print function. You'll hear me use function from now on. We can tell it's a function because it has parentheses after it. Okay, and then I put into double quotes uh, the text hello world. Okay, so go ahead and try that. Just type that in. Hit go. Now this window will show up every time you run a script unless you turn off show this dialog before each run, which I will do because we don't need that dialog. Now it's also going to ask us to save. <clears throat> okay, um, for Wing to run a Python script, it has to be saved somewhere. Notice it has checked auto save files before debugger execute. I'm just going to click save files, desktop. I'm going to want to create a new folder for all of my GSP 318 projects, and this will be for. Oops, where'd my new go? There it is. For lab 01, I do 01 so that we get to 10, they're still uh, ordered correctly. Lab 01, and I'm going to just call this my first script.py. .py is for Python, it's the file extension for Python scripts. Okay? And if I run it, sure enough, run! Ooh, make that go away. Down here you'll see in debug IO, whoops, hello world. Okay, so this is Wing. Uh, all we did so far was just do file new. There's a lot of stuff in here. I'll introduce you to about a fourth of what Wing has in it. Uh, it's got a ton of features. We're using the professional version, which has more than I use. Um, so don't worry about understanding everything in here. But there are a few things we really want to know, like debug IO. Now. Um, if you don't see Hello World, it's probably because you have one of these other tabs selected. So just click on Debug I.O. and you, see, you should see Hello World. Now, all print does is take whatever is in the parentheses and send it down to this panel, Debug I.O. Boom. Um, we can also put anything else we want to in here. Okay. And it will print that. Now, um, computers are stupid. Uh, programming languages also stupid. So it's up to you to make sure you do things correctly. If I leave out a double quote, I am going to get an error. And this is actually an error that has some information that we could use to figure out what's wrong. Invalid syntax on line one, position 20. That's pretty good error message. Most of them will not be so helpful, <laughs> okay? And we'll take a look at some of those later and they'll just happen. Uh, when you get our message in Python, if you don't understand them, the most important thing about them is that line number in your file. 
okay, that it's line one. Now also up here, we can click on this and it will jump to the line, which when we get into larger programs will be important. But for right now, we just wanna be able to print stuff. Okay, and this is an editor that works very much like um, Word or Notepad. It's a very simple editor. Uh, it does highlight um, in blue Python commands and colorizes strings for us. So it gives us a little bit of help, but it's a pretty simple editor. It's built for writing scripts, not for writing documents. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we want to do some math, because one of the things we do with Python is math, and it's a good way to get introduced to it. So like we might wanna do x, uh, let's do this. Let's do print two plus two. Now notice this is not a string, right? These are numbers, okay? and it's gonna print out four. I can print out very large numbers. Okay, and it can do floating point or integer arithmetic. We'll talk more about that. I can print, I can do all kinds of mathematics. Um, so addition, multiplication, subtraction, course so it's a big calculator um, and that's one of the main functions of it is to be able to do mathematics or calculations okay um, and notice that some of them are floating points some of their integer in other words some of them have a decimal point after the number some do not don't worry too much about that right now we'll talk more about that in the future okay so this is somewhat helpful but we're really not going to do this a whole lot this is just to get you typing and printing and please go ahead and do some math and play with this and get comfortable with it because that's a big part of programming but the real power in programming comes from being able to do more than a calculator like we can set up a variable x equals 2 and then we can say y equals 10 and then we can print x times y which should be 20, okay? Now, uh, this is where programming starts to become really interesting. And what I want you to do now is go ahead and click over here. And notice I'm in this dark gray area, not the light gray area, the dark gray area right next to the line number. And you should see a big red dot there. That's called a breakpoint. And what that does is when, it, when the wing debugger hits that line. When Wing is running your program, if it sees a red dot, it's going to stop. Okay? So in other words, it executed this line, put hello in here. Next line was blank, so it executed it, but it didn't do anything. Uh, now, notice that it's on this line, which means it has not executed this line yet. And the reason for that is because what it's going to do is going to set up a variable equals 2, and I wanted it to stop there and go down here to stack data. Now, stack data is where Wing shows us the variables that are currently defined. This is really important to be able to debug your programs. Um, and it also is kind of a cool way to see how computers work. So notice that in here, there's a bunch of stuff with underscores. These are all system variables. In other words, you don't have to worry about those. Ignore them, because um, we really won't use them hardly at all. <laughs> so don't worry about those for now. Don't worry about the fact they're called globals. Just watch what happens when we hit up here there's these little arrows and we're going to hit the middle one. Now that is called single step or step over. So notice how it's a step over the current statement. So if we do a step over, you'll see our red or pink bar move down one line. And that's because wing just executed that line of code or that statement. And then you take a look down here. Oh, X is now equal to two. So when this line was executed, Python created a variable called x and assigned it the value of 2. Now, the way I talk and the way I'm saying this is actually really important because this is exactly what the computer does. And you'll hear me do this over and over again. I recommend you start thinking about the computer that way. In other words, don't, don't say anything else. Don't say it set x equal to 2. Well, it did that, but first it had to create the variable x. Okay, and it'll do that first. Okay, so let's do it again y equals 10. Sweet. Created the variable at y, set it equal to 10. Now we do print x times y. What Python is going to do is it's going to go into the variable x. It's going to pull out the value 2. Then it will multiply it times the value 10. 
and then it will print it, which means to send it to the debug I.O. And there's 20, okay? If we change these values, when we run this, step, created a variable called X, set it equal to two. Created a variable called Y, set it equal to 1,000. Took the contents of X, multiplied times the contents of Y, set it to 2,000. The way that I'm talking will help you a great deal in getting used to the way computers work versus the way they're portrayed in like movies and things where they're supposed to think like people. They do not. They are dumb. They are no smarter uh, than a rock. They're just machines, um, but they run very fast. And that's why they can sometimes look like they're smarter than they actually are. So the reason it's important to, to look at it the way that I'm talking about is so that you can follow what's happening in your programs. Like if I do this, okay, um, a lot of people get confused over what's going to happen here. Well, computers are stupid. That line is going to create a variable called x, set it equal to 2. That line is going to create a variable called x and set it equal to 100. However, there's already an x there. Well, the computer's stupid. It's just going to overwrite the existing variable. Boom. So this line has no effect, okay? Um, in the end, it has no effect, but the computer's still going to execute it. It doesn't look at that and go, oh, I don't have to execute that because it's overwritten on the next line. Won't do that, okay? <laughs> and just like when you write your programs and you tell it to do something you didn't mean to, it will do that as well. And so it's up to you to be able to figure those out. Okay, so let's go ahead and set a new variable, z equal to x times y. And then we will print out z. And we'll do a lot of printing early on in class and a lot of single stepping because those are really important for you to get used to how the computer works. Okay, so now we have x is equal to 100. This line is going to pull that out, okay, and then it's going to go get the value in y of 1,000. It's going to multiply 100 times 1,000. It's going to create a new variable called z and store the value into that variable. Boom, there it is. Now we do a print. It's going to go get the value that is in the variable called z and send it to debug IO. Boom. All right. Before we go on, there's a couple of things that I want to show you. Um, one is that tabs are extremely important in Python. And one of the things that happens on a regular basis is having tabs and spaces um, messed up. So one of the things I recommend you do every time you get in into Wing is go to the edit menu, go to preferences, um, under the editor category, you will see indentation. And note that I have mine set to not use indent analysis. Wing will try to automatically put in indents for you. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. It annoys me, so I do it myself. Uh, and then I set my tab sizes all to four. Um, and then I go to tabs only. Um, now, one of the real problems you have, especially when you move from computer to computer, is if you use different versions of Wing, um, some of them might be set to spaces, some to tabs, some to four, some to eight. You try and move in your scripts around, you send them to me, I try to run them. Uh, it doesn't work. <clears throat> if we all set our tabs uh, for indentation, we all set our indentations to tabs, four spaces, um, then we're good to go. We can share code and nothing um, strange happens with the tabs. And again, tabs are really important in Python. You're about to find that out in, next week. Um, so if you do this ahead of time, you're going to be okay. Everything will be fine. Um, if not, I'll complain about your tabs when I send you your homework back. Uh, okay, the other one is I can't emphasize enough how important uh, documenting your code is. And in Python, it's real easy to do. If you put a pound sign in, you can add a comment. Okay, now most things in your program matter. Uh, when you type things in, if you don't get them correct, um, they're going to give you an error and you're going to have to track down the error and that will annoy you. Comments are great. Whatever you put after a pound sign is ignored by the compiler. Yay! Compiler. And you very quickly learn that I'm not very good at spelling. Okay, so you can go ahead and put in all kinds of comments. Now, um, how to put in good comments. Um, you'll initially put in a lot. I'll grade you on it. You need to put them in because it's important to get good at them and most programmers do not put in anywhere near enough. Um, and initially they will seem kind of kind of dumb, like multiply x by y and 
put the value into Z. Yeah, it, it, you know, you don't really need to comment that once you're up and running on programming, but for right now, it's a good thing to do because then that reminds you what that line of code does. And later on, your code's gonna get more complicated. Those comments will really help you to understand what your code is doing. So don't worry about over commenting right now. And I will mark you down if you don't have enough comments. Um, don't put in you know, more than one per line of code and usually one every two or three lines for now is fine. Less than that is not good, okay? Um, and that's it for this video.